alphabetical principle question number three. All right, we got another great alphabetical principle question. This one is from the REIC exam. This is the new REIC exam in California. This is a great question. I'm almost, I'm, I'm almost certain that this was on the foundations of reading exams on the East Coast, but um, I can't quite place that test number. So, so they do interchange questions. So if you go to the RECA exams, you might see something that was on your foundations or reading test um, or potentially on your, you know, your your science of teaching reading test. So Pearson does switch the tests around, the, the questions around. But this one is from a, a great exam in California um, and really great one to review. If you are taking the foundations of reading or the science of teaching reading exams, you really should take a look at the RECA exams, especially the new ones. But let's start. I want you to take a minute and I want you to practice uh, reading the question to yourself. OK, one minute. I, I want you to start now. OK, go ahead. Start now. Nonstop. Let me uh, read this question real quick. It says here, which of the following instructional practices would be most effective in promoting kindergarten students understanding of the alphabetical principle? that is very similar to the last one we did, right? We just did this one. It's the same question. Which of the following actions by kindergarten children demonstrates understanding the alphabetical principle? <laughs> that's, from Mass that's from Massachusetts, right? And, uh, or, or from the foundations of reading on the East Coast. And this one is which of the following instructional practices? Oh, let's go back. Actions, they said actions here, which we said was kind of strange. And this is instructional practices would be most effective for promoting kindergarten's understanding of the alphabetical principle, uh, which would blah, 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 which would uh, demonstrate the understanding of the, the alphabetical principle. So guess what? Uh, they, they copied, <laughs> right? I think this, que this question came first. This came first in 2021, right? Which of the following instructional practices would be most effective in promoting kindergarten students of understanding the alphabetic principle? That one came first. And then uh, when they came out with this test, they were like, oh no, we've got to come up with some other words. What's another word for instructional practice? Hmm, hmm, action, right? <laughs> okay, so we got these same questions almost. Uh, let's look at the answer choices. So we're trying to do kindergarten alphabetical principle. And remember, this is an activity that's going to be matching up sounds, uh, sounds with letters. Or better yet, we're going to be taking letters and matching them up with their predictable sounds to decode words. So we're looking for something like that. It has to have a component of letters to sounds, okay? So is it, uh, is it D, stopping frequently during read aloud to carefully pronounce and define important words? Well, there's a couple things here, but important words, I'm going to go with new words. And new words is always connected to new vocab. And that's more like uh, tier two and tier three vocab, which we'll talk about when we do vocabulary. So this is really a vocab strategy. Okay, for, for new vocabulary. So that's out, right? Gonna cross that one off. Uh, important words, new words, tier two and tier three words. We're gonna save that for later because we're in kindergarten, right? Not that we're not gonna do new words in kindergarten, but I think that's referencing um, something uh, later down the line in comprehension, in vocab. How about this one? Labeling key objects in the classroom, such as the clock and the tables. Well, that's more like a print awareness thing, right? Print enriched environment and, you, and, and also maybe sight words too. But uh, um, that could be connected to that stuff, like print all over the place, yes? But that's not really letter sound correspondence like we're doing here. How about this one? Create a writing center in the classroom stocked with paper as opposed to not stocked. Uh, create a writing center with no paper, like like just the bare minimum, right? Stocked with paper and writing implements, 
Now, this might be something for letter formation. It, I mean, maybe, or writing in a journal or something, but, but that's not what we're doing. None of these come even close to letter sound correspondence, right? This is actually a much better, uh, this one here, this one here is a better, I mean, this one here is easier to cross the ones out. Would you agree that's like out, out, out? This one here, they, they kind of try to get a little bit more trickier, right? So, okay, so let's just continue. It says, so what, what do we do? Routinely say the words, then write the words on the board. How does that sound? You say the word cat, and then, and then you practice spelling it out. K -a -t. Would that help with uh, um, basic letter sound correspondence and matching up letters with the predictable sounds, right? Like, k I'm gonna use the C for K, the A uh for A, uh, for, for A, uh, the T for T in cat. That's a good one. Okay, team, so this was the first question. Um, and it was easy to get to A. Then they came up with another question and uh, it was a little clunkier, but they made the uh, answer choices harder or, or a little bit more detailed. Interesting stuff, if you're into that. The answer team is A. Uh, and uh, look at all the great vocab we get to review here. Alphabetical principle. Uh, when we when, this is an activity where we're going from matching what we're saying and our writing, so we're we're doing some encoding. We're taking sounds and matching them up with predictable letters. That's that's alphabetical principle going on there. Okay, just as much. That's the encoding piece. That's using alphabetical principle to encode. Encoding remembers when we take sounds. We go sounds to letters and decoding. Remember decoding? Decoding is when we take uh, letters and match them up with sounds. That would be something if you had a CVC word. So you need the alphabetical principle to do both. Um, when we're using the alphabetical principle, when we're decoding a CVC word, we're using the alphabetical principle to do go for letters to sounds to pronounce it. And when we're when we're uh, doing inventive spelling, right? And we're encoding, we use the alphabetical principle to take those sounds and match them up with phonetically uh, matched uh, spelling patterns or letters that, are, that we think go with that sound. So if you're trying to write down the word cat, you might, you might match that with a K, an A, and a T because K, you might think K is a, a K. Okay. Team, the answer is A, and this is a great test to take a look at. Oh, here it is right here. And it was, um, yeah, the answer is A, I think. Let's see. Yeah, it's A. The answer is A. And this is uh, from that Rika test. Okay, great. It's not on that test there. It is on this Rika test. Okay. All right, team. Uh, uh, A is the answer. Let's go to the next one. 